walk into history. He has taken the elevator platform up. He's ready to climb atop that wire and make the 1,500-foot trek to Canada. One of his safety coordinators, Chris, ready to actually hold the wire steady and nod perhaps to the simple things in a sea of high-tech gadgetry, waving to the crowd. Gathered in the United States on his way to his neighbor to the north while inside our production truck, Nick's father, Terry, who will have the only connection directly into Nick's ear throughout the walk, listening and really watching him as he acts as his de facto coach and spotter. And a crossing that at long last is now upon us, Nick Walenda, a seventh generation daredevil, walking with his family's legacy. History awaits Nick Walenda, the wire, and Niagara are yours. This is the first zone, the descent, as he makes his way down a 
incline of five to six degrees on his way to 35 feet below where he began. Yeah, this, really he has repeatedly said, is the most difficult part of the walk. Walking downhill with the weight and again with a tether on the back, something he has never worn before. This, as he makes his way to the wet zone and over that lip, tense moments indeed. Tashi can see the movement on the wire from our vantage point, and we heard his father telling him to change the rhythm of his steps. That's because if he maintains the same rhythm of his steps, that wire, that movement of that wire will become more and more pronounced. So that's the one thing that's under his control that he can do is change his rhythm and hope to keep that wire much more steady. Take your time. Slow your rhythm down your body. your harness feel? Feels fine. Good. What about, uh, do we have some insects bothering you or anything like that? No, nothing like that. How's the, how's the mist working? Uh, nothing, your nothing yet. Nothing Good. yet. Good. Yeah, I wanted you to get past uh, a couple of the pendulums before you really started having to deal with that. As you mentioned, and his father, for 36 years a wire walker himself, married in the family. As you mentioned, his father, the worry wart of the family, time and again told Nick Melinda to give up this dream specifically, a dream more than two years in the making. That's how long it took Nick to ask the governments of both the United States and Canada to allow this. This had been illegal since the 1890s. And time and again, his father Terry said, Nick, it'll never happen to Nick's perhaps eternal credit. Well, we've talked to Terry um, about the fact that he was a wire walker for over three decades, but essentially he came up as a rigger. He went to circus school. He married into the Melinda family. This is really in Nick's blood, and it's something that Terry comes into and has married into. And luckily for Nick, his father is a safety expert, not only his yeah, coach, why? but really helped along with his uncle, who's a NASA engineer, design this very specific wire just for this event tonight. Nick has allowed us opportunities to speak with him however briefly and is he arrives to that lip and stares 20 stories down into that maelstrom let's see if we can visit with him very briefly terry josh yeah. elliott hannah storm can we talk to nick right now yeah i think nick's ready to answer a couple of questions all right, Nick, it's Josh, and as you move over that lip, arguably the single most dramatic sight of all, what can you see? Oh, my gosh, it's an unbelievable view. You know, I am, I am so blessed to be in the position I am, to be the first person in the world to be right here, and the only person in the world that will ever be right here. This is truly breathtaking. It's astounding that you seem to actually be enjoying this experience, Nick. You know what? I am. Uh, uh, a long time in the making. This is, this is what dreams are made of, people. Pursue your dreams. Never give up. Mine might seem strange, but anybody that's dealing with any battle, focus on that other side. You'll achieve your goal, achieve your dream, and beat any battle with anything. Niagara Falls, too incredible to believe. Nick, very quickly, as you enter the wet zone, family so important to you, so much a part of this night, and I know that you have something of your mother's, your homemade shoes that actually are going to help you maybe grip that wire a little tighter with that the homemade elk skin on the bottom of those moccasins. That's correct. These shoes are made by my mother. It means so much to me to have a piece of, of, of my family alongside with me. You know, family is important to me. My beautiful wife, my three beautiful children. To have a family that supports me, even when I have crazy ideas like this. 
if you mentioned the concern about the movement of the wire, how is that right now? It feels pretty good right now. You know, one of the challenges I'm having right now is visually, because everything is moving so quickly underneath me, I can't see the wire move, which actually becomes a challenge because I can't prepare for it as it moves. But so far, so good. Nick, we're going to leave you to it, and we thank you for letting us join you for a tiny portion of your travels. Thank you, guys. Well, how do you like that poise and composure as he does what no one ever has, as he attempts this feat that no one ever would? He seems so unnaturally calm. And yet, trouble looms as he arrives to the wet zone. And this was where that microclimate of Niagara can wreak such potential havoc on this walk. You can see the blinding mist kicked up from that water, 700,000 gallons per second, cascading 20 stories down. The effects on his visibility, his grip on that wire, unknowable until he is out there alone. A man, a wire, and a balancing pole. He is about a third of the way, almost a third of the way, to his goal of arriving in Canada, becoming the first man to ever walk over Niagara Falls. And again, this, the wettest area here, it may actually change three times by the time he's finished with this walk. See the water is dripping off of that wire. Thank you, Jesus, my righteous King. Praise you, Father God. Praise you, Jesus. Look good, Nick. How's uh, can you hear me okay with the uh, the roar of the oh, walls? Yeah. Right oh there? yeah, I hear you fine. All right, good. I want to make sure you can be able to hear me every, every step. But looking good, Nick. I mean, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Jesus. You're really doing a great job. The only thing I'm not happy about is that pendulum that we hung the weather station on. Yeah. You know, it's moving a lot. It's catching wind. Yeah, it's catching a little more wind, but uh, you're going to get past that reasonably soon. So, uh, you're doing great. Nice, calm steps. To Nick talking with his father, Terry, discussing the weather conditions and how Nick is making his way through them. Let's go down to our weather man, Sam Champion. Sam, what is Nick facing at this moment? Hey, Josh, right as they had that conversation, we picked up a...